It is 90.3 KEXP. We stream all over the world at KEXP.org. My name is Troy Nelson. An extremely special day here at KEXP. OC's the day. It is OC's. Hey, Troy. Hey.
It is OCs live here on 90.3 KEXP. Welcome, John, Tim, Thomas, Dan, and Paul. How is everybody doing today? We're doing well. Getting good? Getting there, getting there. All right. You know, it's hard enough for bands to find one good drummer. You realize that, right? Yeah, I'm a pig. <laughs> <laughs> you're pig just, out you're on just pissing off all the bands that yeah, can't yeah, find yeah. a good drummer, and you I'll have figure it out, man. Yeah, I was like, what? what Plenty of hand drummers out there, I think. It's Northwest. very true. It's very true. Uh, first off, uh, John, happy birthday! Oh, thank you. Yeah, a couple days ago it was your 45. birthday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm I right can behind finally you. Finally, take my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that uh, you've been constantly busy. Do you do anything, or did anyone do anything for your birthday? Uh, yeah, my lady came up from Los Angeles, and uh, I insisted that she not bring a cake on stage. And instead, our friend Doug bought like a little cupcake out with a candle, and only one kid in the audience saw it. And he was like, "Is that your birthday?" Like he started having a little meltdown, and I was like, "No." And he went, "Oh," but we hit it backstage, kind of, you know. Uh, how was Portland last night? It was fun. It yeah. was actually really fun. Yeah, that that joint's all right, and uh, it was a good crowd. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people going nuts, and then a few peppered with old people going crazy. Yeah, tonight sold out. Oh, good. Yes. Good. Yeah, Numos just won't email me back, so. <laughs> What's going on, Numos? I'm here to inform you uh, that tonight is sold out. Uh, there might good. be some tickets maybe for tomorrow. I think we sold like 30 tickets tomorrow, so <laughs> come on down. You know, if you want to meet the band, we'll do a meet and greet. Um, one question I wanted to ask you, and I know that people have asked you this, uh, I'm sure, many times before, but with all the constant touring, uh, really, where do you find time to write new material and record new material? Are you literally writing on the road? We really tour come summertime and fall, usually, with a little flyouts here and there. So usually in the beginning of the year, after everybody's taking a break for the holidays, we'll uh, lock down for a few months and record and play and record and play and record and play. Mm -hmm. And that's when we have Dan cryogenically frozen. Right. And we bring him out and he just puts all the spices on everything at the end. Mm. Yeah. What's it like being cryo cryogenically frozen is the question. Cold. He says it's cold. cold. Yeah. He's a simple man. It's a little nippy. <laughs> Got it. Um, so I don't all, remember. Uh, of all the elements that uh, I've heard in OC's music, of course, be it psych or noise or garage or even metal at times, uh, what type of music or what artist do you think people would be most surprised that you're really into? Oh, we all love Toby Keith. <laughs> Huge fans. Now, th now, and, uh, now what was ironically, that guy that had the, the show called Chief? Was it Eric? And the, all the amp, fake amps? Eric Church, good stuff. America. No, I don't know. Um, America. We, we listen to a, a, a wide array of stuff. Lots of uh, jazz and, I don't know, like uh, Afrobeat stuff. Some what? Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper, all huge fans. We were considering dressing Paul up as Lou Albano mm -hmm. for uh, Halloween this year. But yeah, I mean, we, we have a pretty broad spectrum of tastes. Cool. Yeah. I, I have some rare Toby Keith seven inches. <laughs> really? That are, Seven like inches. B, they're B-side. They're just tobacco like, cans. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> no offense, Toby Keith. I'm sure he's not seeing this because that guy could probably take me. And that, through the theory of whatever, he could take my dad. Right? Uh, uh, I mentioned a little bit of metal earlier. I know that you and I both were kind of metal kids. Yeah, for sure. And I just missed Voivod. I still have never seen oh. him and. Take that to my Canadian regrets bucket. Right. Uh, I, and I did too. I mean, it's how I learned how to play music. It's how I got yeah. into music. I actually learned how to play music from learning uh, riffs from the first four Metallica records. Oh, right and so I know at least a piece that of rec Those every records song. are rich with riffs. Rich with riffs. Lick so country. Outside of the big four, the obvious Slayer, Metallica, Anthrax, and Megadeth, uh, what, what other metal band outside of that? Like me branching was like, oh, I started to get into Sepultura and like Death Angel. What mm -hmm. other metal bands were very prominent? Uh, Morbid Angel, pr prominent? Voivod, Maiden. I mean, it just, the list goes on and on. There mm -hmm. was, I, I really... I started getting into the really heavier stuff like immolation and uh, suffocation. Uh, stuff that would really irritate my parents was mainly the concern. And then by the time I really got steeped in metal, I got more into punk and started venturing out there. Mm -hmm. But I still discover metal bands that I've never heard Sodom until like a month ago. And I was like, what? And he was like, oh yeah, it's a classic. Sodom and what was the other one? The uh, Out of Food, Out of Time band? Oh yeah, Hollow's Eve. Pfft. I don't know why that guy didn't sing in that voice all the time. Instant hit maker. Celtic Frost, come mm -hmm. on. Killer, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I would say, you know what grunge is to Seattle? I think metal is to San Francisco, and you got to live in San Francisco a long time. Would there was you a say lot that? of good metal in San Francisco. There was Space Boy, Pig Iron, uh, Weakling, did tons of black metal happened. I think, did Exodus come from San Francisco? I don't even know, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I think Kurt Those Kurt guys Hammond looked like they had some burritos in them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were, they were, I remember that dude was... They were just always carb loading. Just always throwing burritos inside. You can't of mosh on an empty stomach. What are you crazy? 
Who's gonna fill the mosh pit with puke? Too far. I went too far on KXP again. <laughs> Sorry, Ma. You're always welcome to. Yeah. The uh, album cover of Face Stabber was adapted from Swamp Demon by yeah. Frank Frazetta. How did you discover the work of Frank Frazetta? Oh, man. I mean, Frank Frazetta I discovered through Conan books, I think. But uh, everything when I was a kid. You know, everything I liked had Frazetta pieces. And the funny thing about that cover is I bought that hunk of van off of eBay for 60 bucks. And then somehow tracked down the guy who made it, who made it in high school for a competition to become a muralist on Vans in the 70s. And I tracked him down and he was like, what is happening? Like I emailed him at his, he's like in his probably 60s now. And I emailed him at his, uh, his uh, architecture firm and he was super spooked. I was like, this isn't a scam. I actually bought your art. And he was like, where did you get that? Like when he saw it, he was like, what? He had completely forgotten about it, but apparently he worked for a while at a mural shop in the 70s, making Vans look more stonery. That's amazing. So, yeah, actually, did how did cool you stuff. find him? Uh, through the guy that bought it at an estate sale. I was like, I think his name might be this, because wow. it just had initials. But yeah, he was very spooked. It was one of those That's cool... That's so cool. Uh, something he did so long ago yeah. became yeah. something so modern. Came back, and now he has to deal with me, so I'm sure I it's mean, been a pleasure. Th that kind of says something for all artists out there. Like, you know, sometimes people feel like they're throwing stuff out there and it doesn't get any recognition, but sometimes you throw stuff out there and then 25, 35 years later, it gets used in something or the it pops amazing back up. for that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it happens with artists yeah. as well. I didn't... Like that artist. This guy wanted nothing to do with me until I had to like calm him down. <laughs> I was like, I'm not. He was like, What do you want? I don't know you anything, dude. And I was like, No, no, no. I want to give you money. We ended up giving all the money for Zeta's people. His name's Greg. He's a very staunch net negotiator on the internet. So amazing. Thanks to the Frazetta Foundation, though. Well, thanks uh, for the umpteenth million great record that Thank you've you so much. released. Pleasure, man. And I uh, would love to hear a few more songs. I know the listeners would too, if right you would oblige. Okay, yeah, All right. we're ready. Thanks a lot, man. All right, OC's live right here on 90.3 KEXP Seattle.
gonna play a bunch of new stuff.
The amazing OCs live here on 90.3 KEXP. Whew. I don't think I uh, took a breath for the last uh, 60 seconds of that song. Thank you for that. I did. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Yeah. Uh, OCs uh, sold out tonight at Numos, but I think that there's still tickets available. 900 for tickets available night. tomorrow. There's yeah. 903, actually. I'm looking at the tally. Come on, Seattle! It keeps... <laughs> Come on! <laughs> okay, now 901. It's working. Hey! Slow uh, and steady wins the race. Uh, always fantastic. Once again, thank you for taking the time to stop by the KEXP studios, which you are welcome anytime. Thank you so much. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. That was OCs live here on 90.3 KEXP Seattle. Woo! Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.